This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm gonna be working on multiple different pieces of equipment. Was there with the mindset of replacing a compressor. Had to look at the air conditioner. It had issues. Then we gotta throw in another problem with another walk-in cooler. And then we have a walk-in freezer. So all kinds of things to go wrong and they all kind of did. You make mistakes, you're not thinking clearly, you get kind of stressed out that you wanna get done in time and squeeze it all in one day and that just doesn't always happen. Anyhow, give the video a view, cut me some slack, let the video begin. So today we are out here for three issues. Got a package unit here that's not working very well. I guess we may have just replaced a TXV on it. So far I see the coils dirty and when I hopped up here on top it looks like the evaporator's frozen up. So we need to check airflow and stuff like that. And then we have a compressor to replace on one of these walk-ins. And we have a hot gas line to replace in a condensate pan. First thing I'm going to do is start with my filters and belt. Make sure all that stuff's okay. I just killed the power because of course if it don't work, keep on running it. It's froze up because of that. This one here has a solenoid on the liquid line that uh, basically shuts down half the coil. It's a single compressor with a high-low unloader built into it and it looks like we have a fan cycle control down there too. Looks like we still have the high-end free filters that come with it. Quite a bit of ice there. Not horrible is what it looks like on the outside. Looks on the outside it's got ice all the way out in the the one edge. Probably just go ahead and just let the fan run. That anyway, way, self defrost. I always love when I see oil at the bottom here. I don't know if that's left over from manufacturing. Looks like we got oil all through here. Got it through here. Looks to me this is probably it. Runs, but it doesn't pump. Usually the same person comes back to replace it, but because it's out of the area, closer to where I work out of, I got it. This must be it because the contactor is burnt, like I was told. See, that's not in the greatest of shapes. It's got heated defrost, clock feels free, it's got a fan cycle. Not sure if they quoted putting new refrigerant in this or not. My preferred method is always new. Here's the evaporators for that particular section. These ones here are all clean. We got these two over here kind of carrying the load. This is what's on the other condenser, so at least we now we know what we're working on. The air conditioner comes in across the ceiling, out through the convenience store area. I'm gonna pop this out, the accumulator, and dump it out. If we got a bunch of oil in it, I'll remove it for now until we get it, a new one in there. We have a sight glass down here on the oil. I wiped it off and tried shaking it. I cannot see oil level. Uh, a couple of things that's been talked about in the past is always a good idea to dump the oil out of it and measure it. That way you know whether or not the oil returns an issue. Also, worst case scenario, what I'm going to do on this one is, like I said, I'm going to dump this out and see if there's a bunch of oil in there. If there's a bunch of oil in there, then the little U-shaped bend here that has a seep hole in the side of it, that probably is getting plugged up and not returning the oil. The side glass here looks like crap. That indicator should have been replaced. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check our compressor data tag here, make sure that it matches up or at least will cross over to what we have on the unit. We've got a 45K. We want to make sure that the voltage is the same. 200 and 230 volts. It's three phase. There we go. Looks like a 45K. While we're waiting on this, we'll go ahead and get this contact changed out real quick. Power is off talked about these before they've got a really nice crimp and a relief crimp these connectors we've got too many of them in there they're not fitting for squats so what I, what I did stripped it gonna go ahead and get that all underneath one and it makes a good crimp you can see it completely flattens it across the front to back there pinches the outside edge corner there to there makes it fit a lot easier and now you can get right onto the terminal now we're not nearly shorten into one another versus three of them back here. I'm not a big fan of running it through that without a Romex connector, but it is inside the box, so theoretically it's probably fine. It only took uh, about five to ten minutes here, and we're well down to 15 pounds, 12 ounces. I think we're done. This gauge, I notice, is off by quite a bit. Okay, yeah, we got a valve course pulled there and there. So it took quite a bit to get this thing to break loose. I don't know, just naturally seized on there or what. When we do put it back on, we'll twist it up like that, and then, so when we go forward, it should should wind back up. Normally, I sweat these out. It just depends. Manufacturer says don't unsweat them. 
are working on R290, definitely don't unsweat it. I'll take them out like this, but don't put them back on like this. Good way to snap it off. These are numbered one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, we've got our cut there. I'm gonna unsweat here, cut there, unsweat here, slide it up. It's easier to pull down than it is to pull up. I want a nice clean joint on the bottom. Kind of reverse logic for this one. I just basically am so close to that 90 that I don't want to deal with trying to remake it. Everything came apart just fine for me. Just heated her up, pulled her out. I'll run nitrogen on the next go around right here. I really didn't get anything build up wise in there. If I do, I always carry a little brush. I'm able to brush out anything that might have carboned up. It just depends. I mean, you're in a hurry, you want to try to do it right. Same time, you've got little things that will make it uh, just simpler. Just clean it out, move on. Fan blade, look at that. Got a fan blade that's broke. So that would been your next problem. Well, we're gonna have to order one of those now. Hopefully it don't fly apart and cut the coil. Looks like I replaced the defrost heater lockout relay, suction dryer that was leaking. Well, 2016, so it's a few years old. Should just left it out. 26 pounds and I only pulled out 15-ish, 16. Oh, that's great, that's, that's always good. So we probably have a leak too. But this thing was started up in 05, so make her last another day. That might have been those evaporators that were changed. They probably were old ones that were leaking. Now the problem's fixed, I hope. There we go. And let's see if we can see that oil. Up oh, there it is. You can see it. When you tilt her forward. So she's not completely empty. That there, unfortunately, is locked in there pretty tight. They needed to put that bolt on the bottom, and there's no good way to lift this thing up. I don't know if I can pry that up or not. We can try to get on there with the crowbar. Make this a little easier. Went ahead and switched that out. He's able to expand that. It's going to make it nice and easy to drop that right down into it. We were able to pry it out through the bottom. There was no way I was going to be able to lift all this up. I suppose you... Yeah, they've got it all tap con down all over. I'm not messing with all that, and it's a 2005 unit. Went ahead and pulled it through. I'm going to chop that off and shove it back through the hole. But when I was wiggling it back and forth, I noticed some oil coming out of it. So let's take this over to the trash and kind of pour it out see what kind of crap we get out of it. It don't smell burnt. I think we're probably going to be all right. The compressor would have been completely empty. It was a little low looking. It could have had suction dryer on there from when it was factory installed. It may have just been before some of the time I started. But... We're probably just going to go ahead and use this over. It was kind of a place to start, to kind of, you know, just double check and make sure. Took my attitude adjuster, got it back in the spot, took the nut off the bottom of that. It's not going to go anywhere. If it does, we'll put some foam stuff underneath of it, cork tape, whatever. But that will work there like that. At least we checked it. I'd really like to see a nicer sight glass, but no, this was really quoted, so I'm trying to keep costs down, especially if we end up doing all new refrigerant, which I am leaning towards doing. I really hate reusing refrigerant. You can't tell me something didn't go wrong when that thing snapped off. What? Why does it snap off? It's just, I mean, granted, it is getting old. It's 2005. What do you do? You gotta make a judgment call here. Probably gonna give that refrigerant a sniff again and see how bad it smells and kind of go from there. All right, so can't help but notice this little problem. See that? Yeah, that's not normal. So I don't know if it's just getting hung up or what, but looks to me, it feels like it's energized. Man, oh man, you got all these freaking things I gotta do today and I ain't got time for all this extra crap to be piled on top. So it's calling to be open, so it's restricted. If I could take it apart and clean it, pull the solenoid off there and see if open and close it a couple times, you know it's gonna do it again. Okay, you can't take this off for very long or it'll freaking burn the coil up. And of course it won't pull up for me. Yeah, that's not just started. That's been going on for a little while there. So it pumps down. It's just restricted. Spectacular. Okay, let's take it out now. I think this by getting shocked. Okay. There it is coming up. There we go. All right, so it didn't really do a whole lot of good. 
we can do here, because I had to add that valve a long time ago. We can check. Ugh. Everybody's got to tighten them damn things down like they freaking actually stop a leak. Like there's actually a leak actually leaking through the Schrader core. Why wouldn't you just replace the Schrader core? Let's half-ass it and tighten the damn plastics down. Okay, so we are running 176. Over here. Yeah, that's a little, little restricted, ain't it? Yeah, nice. Got everything prepped, ready to go. Got the compressor loose but in place about ready for that to be put on get everything sanded up so we're gonna go ahead and get the compressor section connected first and then we'll work our way back to here okay we got our nitrogen flowing we're gonna purge through there i don't want to open up my valve here because i've got blue tape on it because it probably freaking was leaking i went ahead and got that braze there i gotta pull down into the pocket there lift it up just a touch for there and we'll be good to go I don't have my tripod with me and honestly I'm running out of time. This is taking way too much time because everything's freaking broke here and I gotta fix everything. So it's taking a little bit. Actually with the way that's kind of bent down like that, we can bend that up, it'll be fine. Got the wet rag on there. Got it down as low as possible. That way you can pull the heat down into the socket. And then uh, we just purge through at uh, auction shouldn't get back in there you ain't gonna have enough that's gonna make that big of a deal and we're on this side of the desiccant so we should be good let's go ahead and get this done just like this got it all brazed in went ahead and cleaned it up make sure we could inspect it clean make sure it's clean and good uh use some of the uh, putty stuff on there I had to regenerate it because it's getting you know, a little dried i'm gonna hit that with some of my gray paint stuff i've got similar to Actually, I don't know if I what I used on that one long ago, but it's hold it up pretty good. Held up, held it up, hold it up, whatever. So went ahead and checked all behind there. Was able to pull the nitrogen through that direction there. At the compressor, it's a little tricky, but you know, other than that, everything's been done to the best uh, industry standard possible. We're going to go ahead and get to pulling on a vacuum on this, and then I need to start working on this air conditioner because it's getting pretty warm inside there. I didn't want to do it while the system was still open. We can finish tightening up the electrical after we're done with that air conditioner. Clean those threads up a little bit because those things are not very good. This video is brought to you by Refrigeration Technologies and your friends at True Tech Tools where you can buy all your favorite tools and more with discount code SURVIVAL at checkout to save even more money. Yeah, there we go. That was live. We did that live. If you guys ever watched my live streams, I, you would have heard that I used to be a mobile DJ. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Not only am I an HVAC technician, but I was a DJ, disc jockey guy since 1991 when I was a freshman in high school and started around sound when I was 14. So there's some magical trivia for you. Like how that fit on there. The wires are straight. Everything's wonderful. Presentation is everything only second to operational to get a little bored out here by yourself for a while and you tend to talk to yourself it happens i should have ran that up underneath there i'll attach it to that and then to this that way it ain't rubbing on the discharge line now you've seen the magnet but why do i have that little clip there that's for like trailer hitches and stuff well first of all Okay, we've got that there, but what happens if you make a mistake? I know we've never made a mistake before, none of us have, but if by chance you do, and you turn it on and there's not a piece of metal ore in there, you will burn that solenoid up. And guess what? That holds in there really good. Got that uh, off of one of the forums, and you know what? I haven't really had it tested yet, but I guarantee it's better than not having anything in there. And uh, it will melt down in less than a couple minutes. Handy dandy trip tip of the day. All right, gas ballast open and we are starting to pull down. Let's see how fast we can get this thing down. Start of the stopwatch. And like I said, we've got everything closed up on the compressor, I believe. Looks like it. We got our solenoid. Click a ruin. Now, if this thing truly does hold 20, some odd pounds that one here held 17 
I think we're going to weigh it in slowly though because with those new evaporators it could be completely different now. Okay, we are almost two minutes in, still not dropping much. We are coming down on the bars there on the end. But you got to remember we are pulling against a large receiver which is bigger than the compressor here. It's a hungry perk burger. Yeah, it's going to sleep, wake her back up. Two and a half minutes. And she's boogieing down. While it's doing that, let's go over here and look at this. We're starving this system. It needs a new solenoid on it. I'm gonna have to do that. We're on 410, got the probes uh, hooked up to the liquid. So we'll go ahead and run it. The pressure seem up, so we may not be what I was originally thinking. Okay, belt looks tight. What is that? Grease? Man, oh man. Don't like the fact that we didn't put an economizer on it. I don't know how much more, but whatever. We've got a fan cycle control at least on there. That pulley looks like it's kind of slow. I wonder if our problem is we're not moving enough airflow. It's a pretty good sized store. I'd be really surprised. Let's see where our amp drawing stuff is at. So far, we're running about a 44 and 106. I don't know what our outdoor temperature is yet. Let's take a look. We're slowly building. 25 degree subcooling, 9 degree superheat. So far, things are looking pretty good. Why was it not working? Is it because we just don't have the speed? Definitely that wasn't that great. That definitely needs fixed. Uh, air seven and a half ton let's go ahead and put these high quality filters back in there really need to get this washed off quickly i think they had a spray position over here boy that's just that's just terrific that is really terrific no super heat that ain't good yeah not good sub cooling is 28 we're running 630 some pounds of head pressure that's that's definitely not good i'd say that's probably a problem what would cause the head pressure to be so high? I would say probably overcharged, very possible. We have no superheat, so we got 41 and 41, so we got pretty much zero. Subcooling, we're at 29. That's not how these are charged, but it's still the same principles are there. We're at 16 minutes area. We're at 1600 microns, which kind of slowed down there. I just recently took the gas ballast and closed it oil's not looking horrible looks a lot better than what it did earlier may need to do an oil change may not be a bad idea i think it's been a while since i've changed it all right so it's not running this fan here which is probably why it's running such a high head pressure now look at us we're around 300 and something so we must have dropped down superheat's coming back that's that's some craziness I'm going to say we need to check and see whether our Y1, Y2 terminals are calling, if we even got a two-stage stat on this thing. I'm kind of curious what my temperatures are inside too, or did it finally like trip a pressure limit or something? Okay, this is a bumbling mess. You've got Y1 and Y2 going straight to it from here. So here's where we're at. We brushed that off because I haven't found the water spigot yet. I thought it was somewhere near here. Anyhow, head pressures came down. Here, I want to show you something we got going on. Look at our evaporator. It's running 25 degrees and 102 on our condensing. We're right at about 15, de pound, uh, 15 degrees over. So we've got a solenoid right here on that liquid line. So I wanted to check to see if we are energized, which we are energized. We're pulling right at about amps. But look up here at our suction line at the top here. This is why the TX name was replaced and it had something very similar. But this is with a door off. I mean, this door off, we should be like skyrocketing high head pressure. Right here, can you feel this liquid line? It is not warm at all. Both of those are hot. Hot gas is hot. We're running below freezing. We've run in stupid pressure earlier. Now we've got this here, which is two stage solenoid. See if it's energized. It is not energized. That's not good. I think what we got here is a bypass module for this pressure switch, which I've only seen that on heat pumps. Let's come down here and go to Y2. 
to common. It says we are energized. We should be anyhow. So we've got Y2 going on there. This rinky-dink crap I'm not too impressed with. Okay, I guess they were given an option for an economizer. They didn't want to do that. So strike on them. Here is some of our stuff. Compressor, outdoor fan motors. So our voltage on our unit is 211. We're set up for 240, 30-ish or 208, we're touch over. If you go R to common, we're running right at 21 volts. That's really great. So let's fix that. All right, now we're running 25 volts. That's a little better. And Y1, Y2, they're both calling. Solenoid does work. I've unplugged it, replugged it, unplugged the compressor, replugged it. It's unloading. So we've got something going on here with the way it feeds. We're gonna go ahead and check the RPM of this. It's reflective tape. Tachnometer will pick it up. Going through the uh, instructions here, I haven't done a lot with this particular model yet, but they say they want at least 1700 and some odd RPMs for high speed. That's for VFD. Just kicked on, yes. Being the door being open, gonna change it a little bit. But we're running right around 782. So here's how it's laid out. Get your 67% and 100% capacity. So it comes out of the condenser, goes straight to the TXV all the time. Sometimes it will go through the orifice when it's under full capacity. Then we gotta make sure our airflow is correct, uh, especially since the TXV has been changed. The stuff I was looking at earlier sounds like that was more to do with VFD. All right, so we just checked our amp draw on the motor. It's 8.8, it's our max. We're running like four. The uh, inside, I checked the airflow, made sure all the registers are open. They are. There's a total of eight commercial registers. Each one of those are probably a 10 inch. So we are not moving near the air we could be moving, which would also make sense of why we're freezing up. We're going to speed the pulley up. You can see how deep we are down in the groove there. So we're going to speed this thing up, get a little closer to where I think it should be at, and then kind of check things once we've got it running. Once we know that it's not freezing up, then we'll check uh, temperature drops, stuff like that. So Okay, we did two full rotations. We still need to align the belt. Had to go multiple directions with it. Must be getting a glare off of something. Once I held it in the right position, it looked like about 860-ish area. Still only pulling 4.7. Uh, 5.5. Not so much different. That's odd just found this that's going to cause some problems with the uh, heat not working right so we're gonna have to fix that up that's going to short out okay we went ahead and taped it the insulation is not missing so this will keep it from opening up i brought it on through that way we aren't arcing to anything and it's out here at least an inch and a half from anything so it's not going to arc to it all the wires are away from it we're at least staying above 30 now that's a good sign I'm wondering if my gauges got screwed up because not too long ago I had a peak out of my uh, pressure and it was like super stupid crazy high. It, like took them into zero zero land and I don't know if it may have damaged them because right now they're working fine. I may go another turn yet on that fan and get that speed. I'd like to check static pressure and see where we're at on that. Jumping back over to this, we're at 660. We just valved off. We're not losing anything. I've smelled this a couple different times. It smells fine. I'm going to put the gauge on it, make sure it PT chart matches up. It does. I'm just going to reuse it and add whatever we need to add to it and kind of go from there. Everything else is looking pretty good. Right now, I pretty much got this disconnected, got uh, wires back to the way they were. I think I'm going to go one more turn on my fan yet. So 5.8 is our highest leg on the motor, which we had a room up to 8.8. .8. Recheck the RPM, we're right about 900. The wiring, I cleaned it up, got rid of some of this other stuff. Okay, look at that, our suction's up pretty decent too. A little bit worried here as to why. Yeah, look at our superheat, it's coming up. We'll, we'll let it run for a while, let's put the cover on. Still gotta get to this yet. What are, where are we at on that there? Came up some, go ahead and let it run a little longer. It should be slowing down. Yeah, look, I 
it's still closed. It's starting to slow down, so we're boiling off refrigerant. All right, so we're right at 85 degrees, 85, 86 degrees. Right there, 85 degrees. So for the most part, from a PT point of view, PT charge point of view, we're right in line. So I'm gonna reuse it. I don't smell any burnt uh, acid smell that you normally smell. And uh, see where we come in at. I'm gonna slowly weigh it in to see where the uh, side glass ends up being at. You see it went back down and it's kind of holding down there at that 800 mark. It's actually still going back down yet. We're gonna dump a little bit of liquid into our suction line there to bring us up out of the vacuum. Then we'll remove the gauge. Won't take much. That's five ounces. And for those that are worried about it, the liquid's gonna boil off. You can charge a system theoretically in the off position liquid, it's gonna boil off. What happens when it shuts off on a normal procedure and it doesn't have a pump down? It's going to boil off. You're gonna get possibly some liquid back, but like I said, we got the receiver and everything else there. But as soon as we get that up to there, we'll go ahead and get that taken off, which we are doing it on the vapor valve upside down. That's the bigger opening. It gives me more flow. It's a little faster than doing it the other way. So we're dumping some in right into the receiver. We are not dumping any more into the suction. The suction's around 19 pounds there. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed again. That way we don't forget and burn anything up. Check our pump oil before we put it away. We're at 54 forever. We're gonna go ahead and change that oil. Go ahead and dump that back into there. Completely empty, cool. Add a little bit to it. And just about there. And look at that. Lo and behold, it starts to drop. As soon as I quit moving the gauge around. There we go, right in the middle area. And there she goes the rest of the way down. Get our final torque here on our compressor lugs. Got everything cleaned up. It's able to run that wire on the outside so it doesn't actually touch anything. Everything's tidied up there. Uh, coils on. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Look at that, it didn't explode. That's a good thing. Is that why we lost the compressor? Faulty low pressure switch? See that? That constant toom, toom, toom. That could take the uh, compressor out. Now granted, I did not have it tightened down yet because I'm still trying to find my socket thing, but that shouldn't have happened. We should be out of defrost. Whoa, whoa. What is going on? Yeah, well, that's why it got destroyed. Let's just put it that way. We've got a total of three safety circuits here. We have the low pressure switch, up there, high pressure switch there, and the high temperature switch here. They're all in series, so pretty much pick whatever one you want to pick. I'm going to say possibly the low pressure switch because it's the one that's constantly opening and closing. So we're going to bypass that one first. That blue wire comes off of the uh, power terminal there, goes down and comes back. So if we were to just take power straight from up here to there, that will bypass that switch and we'll try that first. If it still does it, we'll jump out of it, get out of that one, head on to the next one. We got our jumper from here to L1. Let's see what happens. Let's see what our pressure's doing here. No, it's not rapid cycling, that's a good thing. So like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if that switch ain't junk. And obviously our sight glass is fairly empty. We got about 13 pounds in there so far. So we'll go ahead and get the rest of it in until we get her full and then we'll calculate off of that the winter charge. All right, so we've got registers there, 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 and over there. And we got some central returns here. All of them have got really good airflow. This don't feel bad either. This is uh, going into a pretty good size channel. And then looks like it's ducked over that direction there. Right there is why that wire was looping back and forth, so it's smoke alarm. Hopefully, yeah, it's hooked up because it's blinking. Anyhow, we're checking our, our drop across the coil here. 
Okay, it looks to me like we're about 69-ish area. Let's see what we're getting here on this. It's pulling it right off the ceiling, I think, is a lot of what's going on here. And we're running 49 degrees, 69, 49, that's a 20 degree drop across that coil. So uh, going as slow as what it would have had been going, that right there would definitely be it. We could probably even go one more turn faster because uh, we're nowhere near it on our maximum amp draw and everything else. And we've got some excellent flow, but I don't want to create too many issues for uh, heating either though. All right, so my total external static is 0.45 to 0.43. Um, we uh we're looking really really good that's i can't complain on that a bit i'm thinking we're good on that i'm gonna leave my fan speed alone our uh, static on just the return that was a 0.281 or 0.16 on the supply so we're definitely hurting more on return than we are on the other but that could be from sharp bends and things like that but like i said the total we're not doing too horribly bad from what I'm seeing. Jumping back out to here. So we've got 15 pounds, 10 ounces in it so far. We're still not looking uh, full yet, which according to what I had on that chart, it shouldn't be yet. So we're still, still kind of getting that in there yet. Trying to do 50 things at once. Yeah, we're definitely not, not full yet. All right, taking a look at our superheat subcooling stuff. We're running 10 and 10. I don't know if you can ask for much better than that. We're still running in second stage. A little surprised at how low we're running on our discharge. I mean, that seems a little low. Of course, they can't do normal settings. They got to do everything cockeyed and everything else because they think we're too uh, stupid to be able to figure out things. But I think this is way more confusing than anything else. Outdoor leaving temperature. Outdoor coil leaving temperature. So we were running about 89. I had to move it around a little bit to get a better view. So let's just say 90. 85, 90, 95, 100. So 85, 90. So here's 90. We should be running about 350 ish. Okay, we're running 283. That's not real good. So 283. It's, like I said, it seems like it's low. Let's look at this again here. So we're running. 90 degrees, 85, 90, all that line pretty much straight down. It's about 310, 20, 30, 330 ish. Remove charge if below the curve. Okay, we got the new switch mounted up there, ran it through, wire tied, loop de duped, nylogged. So I've got my analog gauge here, I got it pumped down at the valve. Gonna open her up. I got her about 23 to 25 area. That's negative 8 to negative 10. Let's see if it comes on here. Come on now. There we go. Now we're gonna crank it in and make sure she shuts off in a positive. I was at a long line set. I'd rather it got a little bit lower. I do not want it to go into a negative it releases a little bit it has an unloader at the end there anyway which you know what it's holding pretty good there i may just leave it alone run them a vacuum scrolls do not like that that heater is working boy oh boy that bad dog is hot probably should have rotated that to put it across that part right there and have better contact now we're working on this one so i've got both valves cranked down on it pumped it down there's no pressure in there i'm going to kill that so now we can remove this away from the uh the valve and then we'll go ahead and get that thing removed out of there this uh, one over here it's working good got that back together need to get a cap yet for that high side yet everything's good to go here I did tighten up the bolts on the compressor we're staying solid on our sight glass We've got a little bit of flashing there but it's mainly because of how hot it is I think the condenser is kind of dirty it it don't look like it but it is a little bit. We can do that when I come back for the uh, condensate loop heater for the reach uh, or the walk-in. Got everything together in a pile that way I don't lose anything. This uh, air conditioner, I think that initial issue I had was a problem with my gauge. Yesterday I was working on one and for whatever reason, I added five ounces to this uh, walk-in cooler 
and my gauge when I finally put my high sight on because they they didn't make it so you could get it on very easily they didn't have a T on there pegged it out and put zeros across here both low and high because still open yeah, I think it may have screwed up my my gauges but right now everything seems to be fine we're holding 32 which I've seen carrier do that a lot that's not a real surprise superheat still running 10 subcooling running 10 normal standards we're doing good there it's still calling for first and second stage I called the guy that had done the work the reason why that uh, delay stuff was on there was because the old R22 system had it and that system had a lot of issues so I think I'm still gonna leave that off we can always put it in later but I don't want it in there if I don't need it I still got to tune in my head span cycle control there yet but short of that he said he wore he weighed in the refrigerant charge and it should be exactly where he left it at, so we shouldn't have to screw with it at all. That's the most accurate way is weighing it in. Now let's go ahead and get started with this thing. Unfortunately, the only type I have is these brass ones. I hate that because it's paying the hiney to uh, get it to stick. You gotta use the high silver content, use the special flux. Just not very friendly when it comes to brazing it in. I can't remember if I replaced this one already once. I'm not sure why this one's sticking but there is not a whole lot to these not much to it at all so there could be something on the tip of it sticking i'm not taking a chance i'm just going to replace it i mean there really is nothing nothing to these at all it goes up and down okay so what we've done is we've got it cut out i tried heating it up now it's just a, a lost cause went ahead and built me a new piece here that I uh, is a piece of rigid and I went ahead and heated it up with the torch and nailed it with the Hillmore tool just made it so much simpler everything has been cleaned you got your in and outs correct get a dissimilar metal deal going on here and they don't like to play well with each other so we got in and out going on Let's get that smoothly situated right there i'll admit my one that i hate the most and i have the most problem with is usually brass to copper so let's see what we can do with it here that brass takes a lot of heat i get that heat on the back side bless that's in a bad spot clean it up a little bit with the brush wheel makes it look a little better gives it a ability to kind of check into the joints a little bit better with your mirror and make sure it's all good to go um, gonna go ahead and put it together do a pressure test I think I had to replace this once before because that's why I have these valves here I was able to isolate it from the refrigerant charge and I can actually uh, do a little bit of a pressure test here don't want to go too high don't want to be able to push the uh, nitrogen into the refrigerant because you can contaminate the system and I have done it before so that's a mistake that I made once and try to never make again so I kept everything up there on the uh, piece of paper that was up there on the uh, counter ledge whatever you want to call it so we got that there like that this comes in behind it we got that ring and that seal all goes together like that and then we can tighten it down don't need to get stupid with it but uh, yeah, there we go. I do have a little nylog here. We'll just do that real quick. And just get a little bit here on our touching surface. If we can get it to come out, there we go. There we go. A little bit of there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Good deal. Give it a little love, a little finger action there. So we opened it up, everything here was sealed, pushed it back to here, pushed it this way, did a pressure test on it with the, with the refrigerant and it's holding. I did have to go over this one again with the uh, regular uh, alloy because uh, I didn't add any uh, flux to that one because I wasn't planning on actually using the silver. The silver was a nice, uh, it, it, it fed right through with that, which I was kind of wondering how that would do. I have not really tried it too much. I've brazed over top of crappy solder, soft solder, and I haven't tried over top of the, uh, you know, the actual 45% stuff. So now I know. Went ahead and just 
use my generic magnet. Uh, don't look like we've got anything. I got a nice solid stream. There we go. Feels warm on both sides. That's that's a good sign. Side glass is still solid. That's good. Looking good. We can always clean things up a little bit better when we come back. All right, I threw this one into a defrost because I didn't want to have the same issues going on with the other one, so it kicked off like it should. Kick it out. We'll go ahead and set it for five o'clock. There we go. It's good to go. All right, so I put the probes under because I want to make sure that the uh, manifolds weren't acting up. And I had pretty much exactly the same thing. So 360 and 90. Those are my high and low, which is 108 and 26 degrees. You can see it's starting to freeze up already, which makes no sense because unless the TXV is trying to find itself, that's the only thing I can think it could be. Because right now you're increasing the head pressure, which should bring up your suction. It should follow suit. It may have just adjusted though. Look at that right there. It may have just adjusted, hopefully. Because I'm, I'm, I'm like still leery of saying it's good to go until I'm positive. And when I seen that jump like it did, and that's probably what it did. It was steady head pressure, head pressure changed, then it must have had to counter the pressure on one side versus the other. And it's literally freaking 5.30. I'm beyond ready to leave. It'd be 6.15, 6.30 by the time I get home. So uh, we're gonna wrap this thing up, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it. I don't do everything perfect, I try to. But, you know, that's, that's what we had. We had a bad compressor there, we got that done. We had a bad solenoid here. And we had poor airflow here, and who knows, we may have other issues now. So we'd have a good temperature drop, superheat, subcooling, all that was terrific. Pretty close to the charts, which I don't trust them half the time anyway. But you can see it's starting to flood back even more, or I shouldn't even call it flood back. It's starting to frost back even more. So it just makes no sense, unless that fan's stopping. I can hear it plain as day. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, if you would, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one. Later.